Hello, welcome back to the course. This is session 13 of basic Python called image processing. So today we're having a look at the Python packages and commands that are necessary for loading, showing, manipulating, and writing image files. An image file such as this, so this will be our example image for today. And um, if you want to follow the commands that I'm now entering into the console, you should probably download this image before you can either go to the Moodle page if you're participating in the course and then download it here as the image street scene. Or you can of course also click on the link in the description and this will take you to the online course notes for today's session where you can also just save the image. Um, later on, we're going to work with this image. So if you want, you can already save this image as well. Okay, so I'm switching to Spider. I have in my current working directory, a subdirectory called data. And within this subdirectory, I have placed these two images. We're going to start with street scene. So first I have to specify the file name of that image file. And you already know that we use OS for this, specifically the function join from OS pass module. And we enter data and street scene. So this will ensure that um, the file name is generated with um, backslash on my particular uh, computer and maybe generated with front slash on your computer if you're using Mac or Linux. Okay, and then the module for working with images, Python is called image IO where IO stands for input output. Image IO is not part of the standard library, um, <clears throat> but it's typically included uh, in an Anaconda distribution. And from Image IO, we're going to use the function imread, so im read, where im stands for image, obviously, which only needs the file path as an input argument. And we're going to write the result of this command into a variable called image. <clears throat> Before we have a look, before we have a closer look at this variable image and what it is and what it contains, we um, want to have a look at the image. And for this, we can luckily use matplotlib again. So the exact same library that we were previously already using for um, plotting data. So I will again import matplotlibs submodule pyplot as plt in order to make my commands a bit shorter. I'm sorry. Okay, sorry for the interruption. I had to briefly configure my package installation. And I have now imported pyplot from matplotlib as plt and from pyplot 
can use the function in show, so image show, with the image loaded from a file as an input argument. So if we do this and switch to the plot section on the top right here, we are being shown the image file on a two-dimensional plot. Matplotlib here also adds scales, and so x and y axis if you want. And from that, we can also make out that it is, um, that this image has 4,000 rows and 3,000 columns. So it appears to be a 4,000 times 3,000 pixel image, which gives 12 megapixels in total. OK, so now let's see what this image object is in detail. First, let's simply print the variable image and see what we get. What we get um, appears to be an array, which is recognizable here from the opening square brackets. And it seems to be a three-dimensional array because we have um, two-dimensional arrays here and they come in layers in the sense that um, there's multiple of these two-dimensional matrices. Python also adds uh, dots here in the middle in order not to show the entire output, which would supposedly be very large. So we can work out that it is a 3D array with a lot of values in it. Um, if we ask for the exact type of this variable, it's called a, an image IO array. And um, for all our purposes, these uh, image IO arrays will just behave like NumPy arrays that we already got to know two or three session, session, sessions back. So that means that this image should also have a shape attribute like NumPy arrays. And this is 4,000, 3,000, 3, which means that um, this array has 4,000 rows, 3,000 columns, and three layers. Um, so it's a 3D array. The question is just, what do these three layers stand for? Um, we can make out that um, the 4,000 and 3,000 probably refer to the height and the width of the image, but um, the three, is a bit more unclear. So let's just print one particular position in the image. So I'm now having a look at pixel 00, zero which would be the first pixel in the top left, because we're using pulse-based counting, which starts at zero. Okay, if we do this, we see that um, each pixel of the image is a triplet of three numbers, a triplet of three natural numbers. And the question is, what do these three numbers stand for? So in order to understand this, we need to make a brief excourse and learn about the RGB color system. So RGB stands for red, green, blue. This is uh, the most common system for representing colors on computers. And um, this system is different from the one that uh, you maybe learned in school. So in the, the color system that you maybe learned in art lessons in school uses yellow as a basic color. And we were then told that mixing yellow with blue gives green and so on. But here in the RGB system, green is a basic color. And mixing it with red 
is yellow. Mixing red with blue gives magenta, which somehow makes sense because purple or pink seems to be the uh, in the middle between red and blue. And then green and blue mixed together as basic color gives cyan. So we have six colors in total, red, green, and blue as the basic colors, and yellow, magenta, and cyan as the colors that can be directly mixed. From. Of course, we can mix together more colors if we also um, control the amounts of red, blue, and green going into the pixels of the image. Finally, if red, green, and blue are all mixed together, this gives white. Um, this also means that in the total absence of red, green, and blue, the result is black. Okay, so what this means is that this triplet of numbers is the RGB value of each pixel in the image. And the first number is the amount of red that is in this pixel of the image. The second number is the amount of green that is in the pixel of this image. And the third number is the amount of blue that is in this particular pixel. If all the three numbers are about the same, so they don't differ very much, like here, um, the result is often some grayish tone. The three numbers in each triplet always take values between 0 and 255. So based on this, we can find out that um, the value of the upper left pixel, which is probably this balcony or house wall here, is some kind of light gray. In contrast to that, if we look at the top right pixel of the image, we also get some grayish tone as the numbers are again very closely together. However, this time it's more darker. Yeah, you can see that the top right corner is more darker than the top left corner of the um, image, which is why the values in this pixel are a bit lower. Okay, to even further understand this, we can also um, create our own simple images with NumPy and have a look at them. So we import NumPy as NP. Let me make it smaller here. And then generate a test image by calling numpy full and numpy full takes two argument, uh, arguments the first one is a tuple which indicates the shape um, of the array so it will be 10 times 10 times 3 3d array and 0 is the value that is replicated um, across um, all entries of the array. So we are here creating a 10 times 10 times 3 array containing only the value 0. So if we once again use PyPlot or mshow to look at this test image, it looks like this. Easy. So we get a 10 by 10 pixel black image, which is plausible because we have entered uh, zero in every layer, um, so the red, green, and blue layer of the image. And we have learned that um, the total absence of these three colors results in a blackish tone. Okay, now we can also change the colors, of course. And I will do this as follows.
So with the colon, I use the colon notation here to access all the rows and all the colors. So I want to modify each pixel in the image. And I'm telling to edit all the layers starting from one up to, but not including two. So we are here modifying the layers one and two, the green and the, the red and the green layer of the image. This is equivalent to here writing zero and one. And we set the value in these layers to 255. So you can now, if you want, think about what the consequences of this will be. What we're doing is we're giving the red and the green channel or layer of the image the highest possible value. Red and green together gives yellow. So the image that we have created is now a yellow one. So we have simply recolored our black square into a yellow square. OK, so I could now go on and do further um, manipulations. And we could have a look at in what colors this results. But I think you get the general idea. And we want to now rather work on the real image that we have been loading, so the real photograph. In order to do this, I'm creating a modified image by using the method copy on the original image. So this is a quick recommendation. Always create um, a copy of your image using the copy method before modifying it in order to avoid like overriding older versions of the image. OK, what can we do to this image? We can, for example, modify only the red and the green layer of the image and set them to 0. Once again, this notation 0 up to but not including 2 is equivalent to 0 and 1. And setting the green and the red channel to zero results the image to completely consist in shades of blue. So because we have taken out all red and green from the image, the only one that's left now is blue. And in pixels where there was very much blue before, such as the sky, these pixels can still be very clearly seen. Whereas in pixels um, where there was not much blue before, such as here or here, or here these uh, portions of the image have now become black um, because their triplet is very close to 0, 0, 0. OK, let's try another one. Let's try setting. Once again, we are editing all the pixels. And let's try setting the first channel to its maximum value, 255. Once again, plot the image and other than before we were where we were removing colors we are now we were now strengthening colors and this results in the image to now appear tinted in red colors because we have set the value of red to its maximum possible value in each pixel of the image of course we can um, also only change a subset of the rows. So if we, for example, take our modified image and only edit 
those pixels, we're getting a different result. Okay, so let's briefly have a look at this expression. I'm going to put spaces here in order to make it more clearly visible. Regarding the rows, we are accessing all the rows starting 2000 from the back. Remember that using negative numbers, you can index starting from the end up till the very end. And we are having a look at all the columns of the image. And we are having a look at the channel three. This is the blue color in each pixel of the image, and we're setting this to zero. So what this should do is it should make the lower half of the image to appear more yellow. Yeah? We've taken out the blue color, and if we've taken out blue, all that's left is red and green, and red and green together get yellow. So if we look at this image, it looks like this. In the upper half, it's practically normal. In the lower half, it now appears in yellow tinted colors. So if you change only a subset of the rows or the columns, the color change only affects a subset of the pixels. OK, good. If you want, you can now pause the video and um, do a little exercise, load the image, and try out more possible manipulations in order to see what they result. So otherwise, we are continuing to the next section. And in this next section, we want to have a look at the data type of the image. So if we ask for the data type property of the image, we are being told that the data type is uint8. Um, I'm going to tell you in a minute what this means. But before, um, I want to let you know that uint8 arrays can also be intentionally created, created with NumPy. So let's create a simple matrix two by two matrix with just consists of the colors of the numbers one, two, three, four. And let's specify <clears throat> the data type to be U and eight. So we can print our array. And it's indicated as being narrow using square brackets again, two by two matrix. And at first glance, um, this U and eight array just behaves like a normal matrix. For example, if we're adding a number, number one is being added to each entry, or if we're multiplying with a number, each entry is multiplied with the number two. That looks fairly plausible. However, there are operations that result in rather strange results. For example, if we are subtracting five from all values in the array, we get this result. This is clearly wrong because one minus five is not 252. Um, another example would be adding 255 to the array, which gives us 0, 1, 2, 3, which is also not correct given our standards of mathematics. OK, so now I'm coming back to the u and 8 data type. So we have seen that um, images store their pixels in U and H, meaning that each pixel is uh, an array composed of three numbers, the data type of which is U and H. And the U in U and H stands for unsigned. That is, values cannot be negative. They are always zero or positive. And the eight in U and H stands for eight bits. Um, that is, each 
number in a UNT8 uh, data format can be encoded in a computer using eight bits. So a bit can either be zero or one, which means that um, such a number can store two to the power of eight, so 256 possible values. And this is exactly the reason why a minimum number for an intensity pixel is zero and the maximum number for the intensity of a particular color is 255. Those are the 256 possible values. And this is also the reason we see those strange results um, in spider. So two to the power of eight is 256. And uh, these 256 values are the numbers zero to 255. And if we are subtracting from a number which is very small, we're moving back through the entire um, circle of numbers. So from one minus two, we would, for example, get back to 255 because the number before zero in the U and eight data format is 255. So why am I telling you this? First, um, based on this, we can learn something. We can work out how many different colors can be stored in a single pixel of an image. And this number is 256 to the power of three. Why? Because each layer, the red, green, and blue layer, can take 256 values, and this makes 16 Point seven million colors in total that ordinary RGB pictures can store. Second, um, I told you this uh, in order to be aware that calculations that you perform on an image where you mix Data types, for example, calculations of U and eight arrays with non U and eight numbers, such as numbers larger than 255, um, result in uh, arrays that are not U and eight anymore. And the same is true for uh, division, because division typically results in float. If I'm uh, now dividing this array by the number of two in order to, for example, half the intensity in the image. The data type of this new image is float64. And this is important for plotting or visualizing. If I now, for example, call image show with this second image, I'm not seeing the image halved in its intensity, so just a bit darker but the values uh, in the image, because they are float, have been clipped to zero to one. So everything that is in the range uh, zero to 255 is assumed to be in the range zero to one when working with float. This is obviously not the case here, and this is why we are only seeing the very dark parts of the image. Um, this can be fixed by using the double slash. So the double slash, um, if you remember, uh, does division, but keeps a natural number data type. So in this way, we can ensure that uh, only the um, whole number part of the result is being used. And if we then show this image, we get exactly what we want, namely our original image, just a bit darker. Okay, let's immediately use this for um, use this as an example for saving an image. So, in image I/O, there is obviously not just a function for reading images. I am read, but there's also I am write, 
for writing missions. And we're now calling, this needs uh, two input arguments, namely a file name, we're calling it street scene dark, for JPEG, and the image array itself that you want to save. Okay, this time I don't get plotting output, obviously, because I haven't plotted something. But if I go into my Flora, uh, I can see a new image now. Okay, great. Then um, I want to have a look at something else, which is transparency. And as the example, I now want to use um, the cheeseburger emoji. So if I open this image in MS Paint, for example, um, on the area around the hamburger or cheeseburger, um, I see a wide, a wide area. So it's a wide rectangle, basically. Um, which is not actually actually true, as we will see in a minute, but it's being displayed as a wide rectangle. If, however, we are opening uh, this image in another viewer or also in a browser, um, we don't see this wide rectangle. Instead, everything around it appears as transparent. So that you can basically, you would be able to see what's behind the image if it is, for example, inserted somewhere in a document. And the question is how this is being encoded in the image file. So let's just find out by loading the image file. So I'm once again generating a file path called hamburger emoji.png. And I'm loading this image into the variable server image. And I'm asking for the shape, so the dimension of this image file. So here it gives me 160, 160, and 4. The first two values is in, are indicating that this is a 200, 160 times 160 pixels image. So it's a rather small image. And the second number is indicating that this image doesn't have three layers or channels, but it has four layers or channels. So let's try to find out what the fourth channel stands for by once again printing the upper left pixel of the image. So here it says zero, 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 four zeros. Uh, now let's have a look at the image, which is directly in the middle picture. <clears throat> because the picture is 160 times 160, and pixel that is roughly in the middle would be 80, 80. So here, we obviously see a different color. Um, there appears to be a lot of green in that color, less red, and very few blue. And then the fourth value has also changed. It's not zero, it's 255 now. So the fourth value in the pixel vector refers to the opacity. And opacity is the inverse of transparency, which means that the value that you have in the opacity entry is the level of non-transparency. This means that low values will result in pixels being transparent, and high values will result then in being non-transparent. This fourth layer of the image is also referred to as the alpha layer of the image sometimes. So, um, Looking at this, uh, looking at the pixel values, we can work out that based on this, the upper left pixel is 
black, because it's zero, 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 but it is transparent, which causes it to be displayed as white in some image displayers, viewers, or editors. Whereas the middlemost pixel has somewhat greenish and is not transparent at, at all because it has the maximum value in the alpha layer. Okay, let's try to um, further understand this property by modifying it a little bit. So I'm creating a new burger image by copying the original one. And in this new one, I'm only editing the fourth channel or layer, so the transparency layer of the image, which in Python has to be referred to as three because Python starts counting at zero. And I'm taking the same values, but divide them by two while preserving the numbers to be integers. So if I now have a look at this new image, it looks like this. It's the same burger emoji image, but it's been shown with increased transparency. So um, here in the outer parts of the image, we had maximum transparency or opacity zero, and if this is being divided by zero, it still stays zero. And inside the burger, the opacity was 255. So we've divided this by two, that's roughly 128, meaning that this image is somewhat transparent now, but not totally transparent. If it was totally transparent, we wouldn't see anything. So now let's also save this image and we save it under the file name ghostburger.png. And if we go into the Explorer, we can see that there is a new image, which is the ghost burger now. Great. Please keep in mind that um, using this transparency feature does not work with JPEGs. So if here I would specify the file extension as JPEG, I would get an error message because JPEG doesn't support opacity. So JPEG images simply don't have this force layer. <clears throat> Okay, great. So all that we have learned about so far and all the operations and modifications that we have performed on a picture were only pixel-based. Pixel so in other words, we were um, editing each pixel or all pixels separately. Now, the, for a lot of image processing routines, such as recognizing faces, this is not the case. You need, um, often you need uh, to perform these algorithms. You need uh, to have a look at a lot of pixels or a pixel and its surrounding um, simultaneously. And um, for these image processing routines, there are specialized algorithms which are not as easy as what we have learned so far. Therefore, I now want to uh, import another package which is called scikit image. So scikit learn is a popular um, machine learning package for Python, which is based on SciPy, which is the Python label library for scientific computing. And scikit image is um, yeah, 
one of the most popular libraries for image processing. So from scikit image, I want to import color, feature, and transform. Um, scikit image is also sometimes abbreviated as SCAM, which should also work when importing, yes. So one operation that is very often used in image processing is converting to grayscale because some of the algorithms um, operate on grayscale values. This is implemented in the color submodule. One moment. Let's see whether image is still there. Yes, the original image. And there's a function in the color submodule of scikit image, which is called RGB to gray. And it takes an image array as input. And we are writing the result of this into gray image or image gray. So if we ask for the shape of this image, this is not a three-dimensional array anymore. It's a two-dimensional array. Why? Because all the information that needs to be stored now is the intensity of the gray pixel. We don't need multiple numbers anymore in order to specify the color, but we only need one uh, value to um, indicate the lightness or darkness of the image if you want. If we are plotting this image using PyPlot, we get a representation which is colorful, which um, first glance appears unintuitive because isn't it a gray image? So it should be gray. The reason um, is that um, this representation showing an image is using um, matplotlib's default color map. And matplotlib's default color map doesn't know that we are plotting a grayscale photograph. Yeah? It's just representing this um, just as any other sort of scientific data that you may think of. So in order to enforce a gray plot, we have to modify the color map of uh, the image show command. This is done using the keyword argument cmap. And we can here take the color map gray from PyPlot. If we do this, we, in fact, get the image being shown in gray colors only. OK, the second example for image processing that we want to have a look at is um, edge detection. So there is an established algorithm for edge detection, which is called the Kenny algorithm, named after some guy called Kenny. And we want to apply this to the burger image. So in the end, we want to have an image called burger edges, which uh, shows us where the boundaries in the image are. In other words, where the contrast is quickly changing or where you're moving from one color to the next. OK, so in order to apply the Kenny algorithm, we before need to convert the image to grayscale. We already know how that works. But this conversion from RGB to grayscale can only works on RGB images and not on RGB arrays, which additionally have the fourth layer for transparency. Therefore, we need another function which removes the transparency. This function is also in the color submodule and is called RGBA to, um, to RGB. And now we can give it the burger image as input. Okay, so once again, 
we are taking the burger image, then we are removing the alpha channel, the transparency layer, in order to just have RGB. Then we are converting this to um, grayscale. And then we are throwing this into the Kenny algorithm. So this has quickly been calculated. And if we now ask for the data type of the burger edges image, we are being told that this is Boolean, um, which is kind of plausible because in order to perform edge detection, you only need to decide for each pixel um, whether there is an edge or whether there is not an edge. And this is binary information, yes, no. So if we are plotting this image, that's one, that's once again plotted with the gray color map. We are being given this image where black is representing logical faults or zero, no edges, and where white is representing um, logical true or the maximum value, the presence of an edge. Okay, so this has been quite complex construction in order to perform edge detection, but observe that if I would directly apply the Kenny algorithm to the Burr image, this wouldn't work. I would get an error because um, the input to the Kenny algorithm must be a two-dimensional array, which we have achieved by first removing um, the alpha channel and then converting a 3D array to a 2D array by converting it to grayscale. Okay, then the last example for image processing uh, that I want to give is um, swirl transformation. So what do I mean by this? Let's take our burger image and use from the transform submodule of scikit image, use the swirl function with the burger image as an input. And the function then needs other input arguments, which is the swirl strength and the radius of swirling. And here we just pick the dimension of the image. Okay. Let's write this into a different variable. Sorry, I misspelled strength here. And then show this world burger. This now looks like this. And you can see here that in the middle there has been a tiny swirl applied to the pixels. So let's increase the strength of swirling to five and then plot again, in which case the picture looks like this. We can further increase this to 10, plot again, in which case it looks like this. Yeah? So you get the general idea. This is just one example um, This is just one example of one of the like more funny functions implemented in scikit image, uh, which can achieve non-pixel based image transformations for you. Here I'm showing uh, swirling of the burger image with strings 2, 5, 10, and 20, I think. OK, so that was it for today. It only remains for me to say that um, 
the homework is to write a function which creates creates a rose tinted image from an input image. If you're taking part in the presence course, please also go to the Moodle and complete the evaluation for the course. This is very important for the university. And this was it for today, image processing. So I say goodbye and see you next time.